Hey friends, it's Miss Hoffman. I'm just coming to you today to give you some drawing and painting ideas for at home. Now, I know not all of you will have paint at home, so over the next couple weeks, I'll be posting some ideas to be staying creative at home, and I will try to make sure that we will do painting options, drawing options, things that uh, we can maybe do at home. For this particular project, I will show you drawing options and painting options. First, what you're going to do is you're gonna log on to Scholastic to read today's topic, which is on spiders. And that topic will cover reading and science through the story, Diary of a Spider, and how spiders or spiderlings grow up. Thank you so much, Taylor Ruth, for sharing that with all our kids. You can log on to that with their free log on, which is right there as you sign in. As soon as you read this and you think about spiders and maybe draw some of your own spiders, you can do this art activity too. Did you know that spiders can have six to eight eyes? And even though they can have up to eight eyes, sometimes they have a hard time seeing. And their silk, which is what they make their webs out of, are very, very, very strong. Even though we can walk through a spider web, it's because it's so thin. But if that same type of web was made as thick as a pencil, they say that if you spread a spider web, that was as thick as a pencil across an area, it would be strong enough to stop a plane. Scientists are even trying to use a uh, spider web type material to create bulletproof armor and ropes for rock climbing. So that is really cool. So what we're going to do today is we are going to draw spider webs. So Miss Taylor Ruth on the second grade page at Jesse Stewart is having her kids draw spiders after reading these stories and ask her answer some spider questions. So we're going to pair with that and draw some spider webs. I hope you can see my AV equipment at home is not excellent. So first what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to draw a spider web. We're going to keep it pretty simple. You can make your spider webs more difficult than this, but we're going to keep it pretty simple. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to draw a big plus sign through my paper. Now I'm doing this with marker just to save a step, but we've learned in class it's best to always draw with pencil first, that way if you mess up you can erase, then outline with marker, and then fill in with ever, whatever type of drawing material that you want to fill in. So I'm going to start with marker just so you can see. I'm afraid if I was doing it with pencil, you wouldn't be able to see. Next, I'm going to draw an X through my paper. Now, if I was gonna do that, I might get off center. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go from the middle to the corner, from the middle to the corner, from the middle to the corner, from the middle to the corner. We've done that step a lot as we've done perspective drawings, which we might review some over the next couple of weeks. Then I can do it simple, which I will in a minute when I'm showing you a paint version of this project, and just draw circle, 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 circle to make the webs. But I'm gonna make this one a little fancier, and I'm going to do a curve line, kind of like a smiley face. Curve line, like a smiley face. Curve line. Curve one. And I can keep these as close as I want or as far away as I want. If I keep them really, really close together, it'll start looking like an optical illusion and make it look like it's going down a tunnel. Now I'm going to do the same thing here. Connect from here. I'm going to start where I left off and connect it over. Making the same number of lines in each section so it looks like it's woven together. Make a nice strong weave for this thing, and I put a few more, but that's okay. And then I'm gonna go from here, over, from here, over, from here, over, and I'm gonna continue making the same up through here since this section was longer. From here, over, over. And as you see, you would just continue to do that and then you fill in the whole paper. I have one that's finished that I then went through and colored in using an AB pattern there. I have purple, green, purple, green, purple, green, purple, green. So those are cool colors. We know that those are colors that look cold. The cool colors are the three last colors in the rainbow. So our purples, our greens, and our blues. And so that kind of gives it a cool effect. So we have 
our spider web that is all filled in. It looks very cool. You could go back in and add a spider or maybe draw a spider and cut it out and add a collaged effect. Our collage is when we cut in our glue. All right, another way that we can do this, if we're missing our paint and we're missing painting during this time, is we can draw with a marker. We don't have paint at home, no problem. We can use our marker and we can do a plus sign through, but use a thick edge. If you don't use the chisel tip on your marker and you turn it, excuse my marker fingers, you turn it on the side, you can make a thick long line like that, thick broad line. And then we're going to make our X corner to corner. Whoop, mine is crooked. I'm trying to not knock my camera over. And then you go through and do the same thing, only I'm gonna alternate. I'm gonna go purple line, blue line, making sure my lines are thick. Purple line. Blue line. Now I know I just said that we would be painting, but not all of us have watercolor sets at home over the next few weeks. We don't have the watercolor sets like we have at school. So I'm gonna show you a technique that you can use with Crayola markers because these are water-based markers. They have pigment and water in, uh, water in them. So if you add more water, it waters it down. So here I am with a finished one, just like on the Food Network shows where they put something in the oven and then pulled out a finished one. Here's a finished one and it's all done. Now I'm going to take some water I just have a little mason jar with some water in it. And I'm just going to use plain water here. Now, since our marker is a water-based marker, this will not work with Sharpies sent because they're permanent ink. But since my marker is a water-based marker, I'm going to get my paintbrush wet. And I'm really going to go on that line, that thick line that I just made. And I'm going to get it wet. After I get it nice and wet, it turns into paint. And I can fill in that section blue. I'm gonna rinse out my brush in between colors, just like if we were using a watercolor set. I'm going to get my purple line really nice and wet. Lots of water there, and then I'm gonna bring it up, and it's going to kind of turn into a paint pigment, and I can paint in that section purple. So if you're missing your paints, you don't have your paints at home, you can do this with markers. I'm gonna get my blue line nice and wet. Bring it up and it's gonna fill in that section blue. And I can continue this. I can do this same technique, drawing hearts all over my paper, stars all over my paper. I can write my name in cool graffiti type bubble letters and fill them in. And then we don't have to miss our paints anymore because we have paint from markers with our cool colors. Remember when we see cool colors, we go brr. And if we see hot colors, we go woo hot. Does anybody remember what we say if we see a neutral color? We go, eh, just our little whole brain. Things to help us remember our warm, cool, and neutral groups. And then we would continue with that. Now, if you do have watercolor paints at home, which not all of us will, but some of us might have some watercolor sets at home, we can take a piece of paper, lay it down, and another cool technique to do a spider web is I can take a white crayon and I can press really hard, really, really hard to draw my spider web. So again, the plus sign, the X, and you have to kind of be careful what you're doing because it's gonna be hard to see where that white crayon is because white crayon on white paper does not show up good. So you're not gonna be able to see it very good. And then you can just, to make it easier, just draw circles. I said that was a completely fine technique to do. Now, I have one that is already finished over here. It's gonna be hard to see, but I already drew the plus sign, the X and the circles. You might be able to see it in the camera up close. Now, crayons are made out of wax. So another science lesson here. We were talking about spiders and spider webs. Uh, crayons are made out of wax and watercolors are a dried pigment that you add water to. So here's my girl's watercolor set. And so I'm gonna borrow it from them. I'm going to add water to the dried pigment of the watercolor set. Now water and wax do not mix, just like oil and water will not mix. If you've done that as a science experiment and you put oil and water in a jar and you try to mix them up, they're gonna separate. Water and wax does the same thing. If I pour water on top of uh, melted wax from a candle, the water's gonna float up to the top and it's gonna do the same thing here. So anywhere, 
and I'm gonna use my cool colors again, purples and blues and greens. Anywhere where I put that water, it's not gonna stick to the crayon that I drew. And it's gonna scoot it off, and then you're gonna be able to see the web. I call this the magic paintings with the kindergartens, but with the kindergarten kids, but you guys know that that just means that the water won't stick to the wax and it pushes it off. It says, get off me. I don't want you on there. And it will show up the white crayon that you drew. Then if you want to get super fancy, you can get the water, the paper pretty wet in sections and ask permission to use the salt. We don't want to cause a salt shortage in our house here, but you can use some salt. I got my salt grinder and sprinkle it on the wet areas. Salt, another science lesson here, will absorb the water and it will soak up that paint pigment. And anywhere where you have the salt, it will soak up sections of that paint pigment and it'll leave little white speckles underneath. So that kind of gives it a cool rainy day effect behind your spider web. And here's one that's finished that I just did. You can see the rainy day speckle the effect after the paint dries you can scrape the salt off and it just gives it a cool rainy day effect so here's one so you have learned how to draw spider webs with markers you have learned how to color your spider webs with cool patterns you have learned how to make your markers into paint and you can use that with any project not just the spider web project and then you have reviewed your watercolor wax resist on how to make spider webs and with this cool salt technique i hope you try one of those if you don't have the supplies that you need at home you just bank this information into your head and when you return to school i will let you borrow some supplies to make these thanks i miss you guys Bye.